I've got six-time Nathan's Hot Dog Eating Contest champion, Mickey Sudo, here with me. Mickey, thank you so much for joining us. I'm excited. Thanks so much for having me. So I got to know, like, what does it mean to be ranked the world's number one female in competitive eating? It's a lot of pressure. I mean, you know, throughout the year, I compete alongside men. All of our contests, save Nathan's, are co-ed. So I don't really think of it as, you know, a number one female sort of thing. Um, but I guess the pressure is on just because I've won the women's division six years in a row. It's kind of like first place or nothing. People are going to ask me what happened if I don't come back with the seventh belt. Um, yeah. Well, you hold three world records for eating kimchi, hot dish, and ice cream. So how are hot dogs different than those dishes? Oh, they're, they're completely different. With hot dogs, you're dealing with two different distinct uh, textures and flavors. So I separate the meats from the buns. So just because of that alone, it becomes really technical. You have, you have to have this hand-eye-mouth coordination. It's not just shoveling food down your throat. Um, so there's technique, speed, sort of agility uh, to all to take into consideration. Whereas ice cream, hot dish, and kimchi came down to just swallowing fast with very minimal chewing. That helps in hot dogs too, but definitely a different, a different animal altogether. Well, this year, the competition is shifting indoors due to the current pandemic and state of affairs. So do you feel like the no fans might impact your performance at all? Yeah, I'm trying to remind myself that it's not no fans, right? Because we've got just millions of people watching from home. I wouldn't be surprised if more people than ever tuned into the ESPN coverage. So I know that there are definitely eyes on me and the pressure's on, uh, but it's definitely going to be weird without a live crowd. Um, you know, I definitely feed off of the energy of tens of thousands of people just screaming or just passing through Coney Island in general. So I'm really going to have to dig deep, find motivation within and not be distracted by things that I might pick on that I might not pick up on, you know, if it were loud. So, so I mean, do you consider this the Nathan's hot dog eating competition, the Super Bowl of competitive eating? Oh, absolutely. This is the largest event that we have on the circuit. It's the most competitive. So it draws out the, the top competitors. Uh, it, it's the most people in attendance. It has live TV coverage. And in a normal year, you've got the fanfare and the whole spectacle that goes along with 4th of July. Um, yeah. So with that said, there's a lot at stake. And you know, personally, for me, it's become part of my annual tradition. It wouldn't feel like 4th of July if I weren't doing something with Nathan. So it's a big event um, on the circuit and for me personally. So, I mean, the question on like everybody's minds, I imagine, is what goes into training as a competitive eater? Um, so my training is two, two part. Uh, for me, it's important to get down to what I consider my fighting weight. Um, you know, I don't think I'm the only one who put on the quarantine 15 over the last few months. So getting back into the day, right? Exactly. And no shame yep. in that. But in order for me to be competitive at the table, I really like to feel lean and healthy. Like I could just, you know, maybe run around the block a few times without being winded. That really helps me eating hot dogs. So one is cardio, getting back in the gym, being fit and healthy and lean. The other part is obviously pr practicing with food. And I'm super, super fortunate because um, my boyfriend and fellow competitive eater, Nick Weary, who will be competing on the fourth too, um, is right in my, he's right here, you know, as a resource at my fingertips. So we head up the gym together and we do hot dog practices together. So as soon as we found out that there was going to be a competition on the fourth, uh, we didn't miss a beat. We, uh, you know, hit the ground running and got back in the gym and started our training. So we just did uh, our, uh, for both of us, what was our best practice to date uh, just a few days ago. So I'm going into the fourth with, uh, you know, feeling pretty good. That's awesome. Now dating a competitive eater, like what you guys are both in the game together. Like do you, how do you stop yourselves from like, does it ever like come into your personal life? You guys are like at a restaurant, like you just start going at it. Like, how does that work? No, it's, it's more fun than anything, but you know, we'll both tell you for those 10 minutes at the table, we might as well be strangers or rivals or arch enemies. It doesn't matter. We're, we're both there to win and put up our best performance. And uh, you know, I, I think you're going to see good numbers out of both of us. And we actually have a friendly wager going on at home as to who can beat their personal record by more. So for me, that's 41. I think for him, that's 36. So, you know, we're, we're hoping to claim hot dog minutes or hot dog dominance <laughs> in this household. That's incredible. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a lot of fun. It makes all the craziness, you know, more manageable and it makes every win that much more rewarding. Um, yeah. 
<laughs> That's amazing. It's, it's awesome. It probably helps you commit to the lifestyle too. Now, when did you yeah. realize that you could make a career out of competitive eating? Like when did that hit you? I mean, it's still surreal, right? I get to travel, have a whole lot of fun, meet cool people. Uh, and, and it's considered work. So I, I don't, I don't know. I feel like it's a little bit too good to be true. So what's the strangest thing that you've ever eaten in a competition? Strangest thing. Uh, I, don't, I don't think I've eaten anything weird. All of our, all of our competitions are around, you know, foods and delicacies, but I have a phobia of oysters. Uh, I always said that I would never do a crawfish eating competition or oysters just because the texture and the, it's not my thing, but I was offered an opportunity to eat oysters in Ireland. Uh, so I figured just, I'll just have to suck it up literally and figuratively for three minutes in exchange for this awesome trip and opportunity to go to Ireland. So I did that. And for me, that was, uh, that was an interesting experience. I love that. Well, you've won six straight Nathan's hot dog contests. I mean, what's been like your secret weapon here? Uh, you know, uh, you know, I've got some great people pushing me at the table throughout the year. And like I said, men and women compete side by side in every other discipline. So just being around awesome competitors that pushed me to the limits has really, you know, sharpened my skills over the years. But I think I, I still, I haven't come close to showing everybody what I'm capable of. I honestly think that I'm going to hit my personal best of 41 and then some, hopefully set that record, uh, the women's record, which is at 45 right now. Hopefully we'll have a new one coming on July 4th. Um, Ooh, we can't yeah, no, wait. I, attribute, I attribute my success to just the people around me. I mean, I, I, sometimes I'm, I'm still blown away by what, by what we're capable of. Amazing. Well, which Nathan's hot dog eating contest would you say has been the most memorable for you for whatever reason? Memorable. Uh, you know, the hundredth anniversary was really special uh, just to be part of that. And I think that was the year that they updated to these like super nice belts. And so the hundredth anniversary was nice. Uh, but I, I guess my first year too, because I was a relative nobody and uh, I really, I'd done local challenges but I think I almost had to prove that, you know, me being successful on the, in, a, in a smaller field wasn't a fluke. Uh, so, you know, just pushing the boundaries of my own comfort zone and taking that first W my very first year was, uh, that's pretty memorable and amazing. Mickey Sudo, thank you so much for making the time for DraftKings. We appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me.